touch on this once again. Now, you get these guys at 19, he, he was able, but it was a different era, but you get these guys a franchise and an organization at 19 or 20 years old and you throw millions of dollars at them. Who can relate? They homeboys can't relate. They brother can't relate. They cousin can relate. John Wall can relate. No doubt. John Wall knows what that feel like. Yep. John Wall knows what it means to have an organization on your back at 19 your years old and going. making millions of dollars and pushing it forward. So he knows that. Only person, only people can speak on that is somebody that's been in that situation. Right. This this brings me to another thing real quick. Oh, here we it's go. Something that we talk about and this kind of looks serious because I remember in, in, in 2019 mm -hmm. what you dealt with personally with your mom passing away, yep. and you know I remember reading that you know mentally the toll that it took on you. I remember coming in and, and I speak on this and. My mom passed away 13 years ago. Um, my father passed away about three years ago and I lost my stepmom about three to three and a half, four months ago. So I remember reading and the mental effect that it took on you. And I just remember landing two, three in the morning and flying, going straight to the hospital to see, sit, spend the night with my mom when I get in and then wake up in the morning, go home or whatever. Just talk about that real quick because I know we like to have a lot of fun, but I also want to talk, talk about mental health and how that challenges you and how that changes you. Uh, I think just us as um, African American men, we feel like you said like trust is a big part for us. And uh, coming up from like our background, we feel like we ain't trying to ask another man for no help. Like, yes. We try to figure it out on our own. And uh, 2019, matter of fact, I moved up a little bit before that. 2018, I tear my Achilles. Mm. And a lot of people don't know this neither. I had a bone spur like two, three inches in my Achilles that I played with for six, seven years. Mm. Told me it was tendonitis. It kept getting worse. <laughs> So it's tendonitis? Badass doctors. Bro, I ain't gonna lie though. It's, uh, what are you missing? The three inch bone spur? It's, it's tendonitis. You don't see that bone? It's, if we playing in Cleveland, it's Colin Saxon, like my first time playing him. He's fast as hell. You know, yeah, buddy. Yeah. You're dope. He take two drills at me. I have to jump my back pad. I said, oh, just foul. And I walk right to the back. Like, it, I gotta get surgery now. This, oh, it's inflamed. Like, it's red. Show you a picture. No. So I go have surgery. My first son about to be born, December 5th, 2018. My mom get diagnosed with breast cancer. Oh, so I'm like, damn, God's telling me to sit my ass down somewhere. Then now I get to watch my, you know, cause most of the time we travel and play in the season, yeah. we don't get to see our kids grow. No doubt. Then I'm like, damn, my mom is sick. Now I get to spend a lot of time with her. I don't know how much time she got left. Yeah. So I'm just seeing her go through chemo, being around her, I move up there with me and stuff. Uh, and I just see her getting weaker and weaker. Cause my mom used to be at 5 a.m., 6 a.m., yeah. going to TJ Maxx, going to Marshalls, yeah. Ross. Yeah. Give yeah. them how much money I had. Yeah. She's still shopping <laughs> there. The same story. She going to flea market, all this. Yeah. And like, she just started getting weaker and weaker. She come to my last birthday party, uh, 2019. And I could just tell like, you know what I mean? She getting to that point. Uh, then she had a, a heart attack on her left side. So her body went numb. And I was like, you know what? I'm like, you know, you try to go in there and you see your parent look a certain way. And I'm like, I can't go in there. Like, yeah. you break yeah. down, you cry. Yeah. It's awful. And my sister like, man, you gotta be strong when you go in there. I'm like, you can tell me whatever you <laughs> want. I can't be <laughs> strong. <laughs> like, I'm strong, but yeah, I'm trying yeah. to be. So then, um, what did I say? Yeah, I try to be strong. So then um, we about to go play Charlotte. And my mom's back in North Carolina now. So we flying to Charlotte. We land. I get the call, like 20 missed calls. I'm like, please don't tell me she died. Like, this mm -hmm. is you know what I mean? I call my sister back. She like, yeah, she passed away. They got on the breathing machine. So we had, a, you know, what is that? A risk carton downtown yeah. Charlotte? Mm -hmm. Boy, I, I don't know how much I that room up. Like, uh, I'm talking about, you know, that they got a TV in the mirror. I'm talking about, boom, I'm breaking everything. Flowers thrown everywhere. And this one I really saw Bradley Bill and we got closer. Like we was we was brothers before. Yeah. And I called him like, man, my mom died. And she on the breathing machine. He come down there, kick it, talk. Just emotional as hell. One of my old heads and my security at the time on the team, we get in the car, I'm like, bro, just drive me there. It's a three three hour drive from Charlotte. Mm -hmm. I get there, it's probably like four hundred people outside. Damn. Wow. Like two hundred outside, two hundred upstairs. Wow. I'm listening to R. Kelly, I wish the whole ride home, bro. Mm. Just just in the back seat crying the whole time. I get to the hospital. I'm like 6'4", 220, 215 the time. I look, see on the breathing shot, I just faint. Like I never fainted before in my uh, life. So I just faint. Everybody trying to catch me. Like, like we can't uh, catch you. It was funny at the time afterwards. <laughs> and then I remember just two, three nights straight. I just lay right beside her. Like, you know, they got that little ass bed, yeah, neck hurt yeah, and all that. Yeah, yeah. I'm just laying there like, damn. So like, uh, it's like a thousand people come there, bro. And the lady said, I ain't never seen as many people come to somebody that's on their deathbed. Wow. So that let me know how much respect love my mom had. Yeah, respect. Like, respect. And everybody, and one thing I respect about my mom is, even no matter who I was, she still used to go to AU tournaments at Garner Road with David West run, run the uh, AU program. 
and work the, con the concession stand in the front door. <laughs> like charging people $10 to come in and stuff like that. Most people that get to that point, yeah. she'd be like, yeah. man, I don't gotta be around this, yeah. my son, who he is. Yeah. She never was that. And that's what like instilled why, in me to be who I am. That's people were at yeah. that hospital yeah. too though. So then I'm like, all right, everybody get out. Just let me and my two sisters on my mom's side talk to her. You know what I mean? She's like knocked out in a mm -hmm. coma. She wakes up. Like, look at us, and we all express how we feel to yeah. her. Wow. And somebody tried to open the door, she closed her eyes back. She passed away probably like 15, 20 times, like hit zero, and she just kept fighting. Wow. wow. And that's how she was. She was a fighter. So when that went away, I was like, you know what? My mom loved Bud Wazers. Mm. I was like, you know what? She passed that night. I want to have about 10 Bud Wazers. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even drink beer. That don't you make you a bad guy. No, As no, I'm should. just pressing. So I have 10 Bud Wazers. I'm lit. Think I'm having fun. I go outside, throw all that shit up. <laughs> I'm like, man, I'm messed up. I, I can add them up, but why? But just like, uh, speaking of that moment, like my mom was my best friend. Like I still got her same phone number saved. I text it yes, every morning. Me too. I call it. I used to talk to my mom five, six times a day. So I know how it is, and I'm trying to tell people mental health is serious. So I had to go yes. get a therapist after that. Yeah, me too. And what I piggyback on and express it about, about mental health is, like I had a video come out about certain shit. Nobody's perfect. You make mistakes. Yeah. And at that time. I was in a dark space trying to find happiness. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was going out, partying, having fun, just trying to find something yeah, yeah. to give me some peace. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't the right way. And when I had all that go through and I had like, me, you gotta think, 2017, I signed a mass contract. I'm one of the top 10 best players in the league. <laughs> yeah. Second best player after Braun, have Achilles injury after that. And now I see I go from rock bottom to the bottom. Yeah. And who's really with me? Who's really there for John mm -hmm. Wall? The person, not the basketball player. Yeah, yes. for sure. Cause yes. you know when you're done, the, yes. the phone don't ring the same way. <laughs> it's all. different, isn't it? Not at all. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna see who's really close to me. And my mom told me before she passed, she was like, you're gonna lose a lot of people close to you, cause they're not there for you, they're there for your lifestyle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I finally got to that point when I realized it. So mental health is a big factor. I still talk to a therapist to this day. Yeah. To yeah. figure out and better myself. So if you ever feel like you're in a spot where you're not comfortable as a black man, African American, or any race, no offense to that, go get help. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with it because I had to figure that out or I wouldn't be here today. And how old are your kids now? Five and three. Man, for See, me. that's yeah. why you stepped away. Yeah. For mm -hmm. me, I was watching, you know, obviously I, I, I caught, caught, you know, wind of that from, from my perspective and, you know what I'm saying, I didn't know you, you know, personally outside of the, you know, the interactions on the basketball court, but my heart kind of went out to you because I know that feeling. Mm -hmm. I know what that feels like. Um, you know, when I had to tap into, you know, the therapist and the mental health part of it is I had been I mean, it's different when you lose a parent. So I've been a lot of funerals. I mean, I can go on. My yeah, brother passed sure. away. You know, Fat Frank, Lil Malcolm. You know what I'm saying? Like I can, the list goes on. But when it really hit me is when I lost my father, because my father was my best friend. Like if anybody know me, I'm my daddy's child. Boy, if I, my daddy walked through the door. It won't be no different than me walking through the door. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna sure. say I talk like him. I act like him. You know what I'm saying? There's so many similarities. But when I lost my father, is when I really had to tap into that mental health. You know what I'm saying? Because that's when things just kind of start to pile up and everything starts to hit you at once because you start to suppress a lot of things. Mm -hmm. You go back to when I lost my mom, man, I didn't take no time off. I mean, I literally had the funeral, did the wake and everything, was right back into practice, right back into basketball, really took no time away. But when I lost my father, that's when everything kind of caught up with me at once. And that's when I had to tap into the mental health and mm -hmm. sit down to talk to somebody and just have those conversations. Because like you said, you know, as black men, we taught to suck it up. Mm -hmm. and you can't, nothing can affect you. I remember the first conversation I had with my stepmom about having a heartbreak, and her conversation back to me was, don't be no punk. <laughs> okay, listen, I can't talk to you no more. <laughs> you can't help me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, look, you can't help me. Yeah. I'm talking about a heartbreak, you talk about me being a punk. Like, this hurts. <laughs> <laughs> you can't help me. So I just understand. You don't be a punk, now I know why you yeah. are who you I are. I ain't no punk either, shoot. Yeah. I, what thing about it, I ain't no damn punk either, but <laughs> the stigma, you yeah. know what I'm saying, of that, you know what I'm saying, that, that was tough. So, you know what I'm saying, I just wanted you to speak on that because that's real, yeah. you know what I'm saying, and now, fast forward, now I just lost my, my stepmother three months ago. So now for, for me, cancer has taken all my parents. My father had a little bit of uh, colon cancer myeloma. My mother had adrenal carcinoma and my stepmother had um, um, lung cancer. Yeah. So now cancer has affected me in all those ways. So it's my mission yeah. to fight with cancer. And I think yeah. I have the partnerships with Bounce Back from Cancer and the things I have with Baptist because of how special that is yeah. and that relationship that we have with those people. So I just want to commend you for, for not, you know what I'm saying, yeah. going that route and stepping out there and, you know, being vulnerable and being honest with somebody and, and getting help though. Yeah, a lot sure. of times, a lot of times we won't do that and we don't do it. Yeah, we don't do it enough. Yeah, cause my dad died from liver cancer, my mom, breast cancer, and then one of my little friends, Maya, Died for leukemia. That's the little girl that I had that uh, special thing yep. I did for in yeah, D.C. Man. So uh, that was special. Like you said, uh, just to piggyback a little bit, uh, 
I didn't really take no time off after my mom passed. Yeah. And I wasn't even playing. And I remember I went back to uh, Detroit to meet the team. Mm -hmm. And we was practicing. I'm just like, it's my sanctuary. Like, this yeah. only thing that's going to give me peace. So my mom like, man, get your ass back to work. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm good. I'm grieving. I'm done. You I'm, I'm at peace right now. You ain't grieving. Go get back to work. And that's what I did. And uh, it kind of made it cool for me. But then a devastating hit a year later yeah. because yeah. my grandma passed. Yeah. And I feel like my grandma was just like, man, I'm tired. Like, my, my daughter died. I'm good. And it was hurtful for me because we couldn't have a real funeral. Yeah. It was COVID. And um, we was in, I was in Houston and we was playing the OKC, we won. And we was about to play another game. I flew, but I couldn't be around my family. You know, if you're around your family, totally anybody, you got to yeah. go to- uh, Is it testing on stuff? Yeah, you had to go to quarantine for yeah. 10 yeah. to 14 days. Yeah. I'm like, I can't be around my family. Like, it's a bad time. So I had to go in there and see my grandma on her own. And I could just wave at my family from the window. And then I went back to That's the team. Wild. Man, but, uh, if I could give you one piece of advice, and, and this is just my advice to you, is like, don't remember how we saw them in those hospital beds. Mm -hmm. Like the, the, the visions, because yeah, because for me, I was, I'm the oldest, so I had to be the one to take my mother off life support. It had to be my decision. There was mm -hmm. nobody else to make that decision. That was a tough decision I had to make. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I got to say, pull the plug on my Yeah, mom. I was the same. Yeah, so, I want the oldest, but they look yeah, at me like, yeah. what you want to do? I'm like, yeah. but did that, let her do it. What we looking at and, and that version of them is not the version we want to remember. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes that's the vision that comes to our head. But we got to remember the times that we had, the great times, the fun, yeah. everything they instilled in us. What you going through right now, regardless of whether you miss your mom or not, she prepared you for it. Yeah. Cause you handling it. You handling it the right way. That ain't mean you ain't got knocked down. That ain't mean it's easy, but you handling it. Mm -hmm. So she prepared you for it. So she did a great job. I'm sure she was an amazing. There's only one thing I still be questioning that. You probably got the same thing. Did I do enough? Yeah, yeah. I think about it and I look back at old pictures and I just wanted to make sure that they enjoyed the journey yeah. just as much as I did. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because I wouldn't be here obviously without Y'all did enough. No, no, for sure. But like my, my, my team be like, yo, stop saying that. I'm know. like, but like, that's why I got this piece on the day. Like, there you go. I mean. Shouts out, to, shouts out to family. Yeah, yeah. Family first. Right. For sure. Yeah, for sure. that's right.